During your prenatal doctor visits, you're often given many routine tests that help rule out any maternal problems or those with your developing baby. What are these tests? Why are they done? And how accurate are they in detecting problems with the pregnancy? There are lots of routine tests given all throughout the pregnancy. Weight is a major issue for many, many pregnant women. It's a general barometer of how well the pregnancy and the patient are doing together. We would like women to gain a certain amount of pounds based upon how much they weighed when they started the pregnancy. If you're very thin when you get pregnant, we need you to gain 28 to 40 pounds. If you're normal weight, we need you to gain 25 to 35. And if you're overweight or obese, we need you to gain 15 pounds. Initially, women have testing done on their urine and their blood. We test your urine to see if you have an infection in your urine. In my practice, we do drug screening on all women. The blood tests include RH factor, is it positive or negative, rubella, or sickle cell anemia, syphilis, HIV, and hepatitis. If serious birth defects or genetic disorders are suspected, a non-invasive screening for Down syndrome, the nuchal translucency screening test can be performed between 11 to 14 weeks. The nuchal translucency test is a newer screening test that's become available in the last several years. It's used to detect Down syndrome. It is a measure of the baby's neck thickness on ultrasound combined with blood work done on the mother and essentially gives risk factor numbers similar to previous screening tests that have been used in the past such as the triple screen and the quad screen. Some advanced medical centers include an additional factor in the risk of Down syndrome and examine the fetal nasal bone. If the bone is not there between 11 and 14 weeks, the fetus has an increased chance of Down syndrome. This marker along with mother's age, baby's age, nuchal fold measurement, and blood tests bring the accuracy rate up to 97%. The triple screen is a simple blood test to identify higher than average risk of certain serious birth defects. The triple screen is a phrase we use for testing blood between 15 and 20 weeks. And in fact, in the last few years, we now call it a quad screen because we measure four different hormones in the woman's blood. They are alpha fetal protein, which is a protein given off by the growing fetus. It's human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG. And we also measure estriol, which is a female hormone, and inhibin. Between looking at these four ingredients and how high they are, we can tell if your baby's at risk for certain problems, specifically neural tube defects and some chromosomal problems like Down syndrome. The most common prenatal test to diagnose genetic defects is the amniocentesis performed during the second trimester at 15 to 18 weeks. There's a 99% accuracy rate with amniocentesis compared with much lower detection rates with screening type tests. They are considered the gold standard test. We use essentially a very thin needle and take the actual needle part out during the procedure so it's a plastic sleeve that's in there. You know, and the baby can bump up against that, but it's of no danger to the baby. The chance of miscarriage after an amniocentesis is about 1 in 350 to 1 in 400. People who do a lot of amniocentesis do have less risk individually. We think that there's just a certain risk that isn't operator dependent that's related to some kind of immune response that happens after an amniocentesis that then escalates and ends in miscarriage that we can't control for because we don't know who would have the immune response and why that individual person has it. On my first child, I had an amnio done. I had it done at week 20. The experience was actually painful. I got cramping, so it wasn't an exciting experience. It was very scary. I had the test done because on my alpha fetal protein screening, I had a one out of 70 chance for Down syndrome. Most people my age, I think, is about one out of 300. And because of that, my husband really wanted to make sure that the baby was OK. Everything ended up being fine. I don't know if I'd actually recommend other women having this procedure because the risk is so high. I now am pregnant with my second child and I'm not going to have an amnio with this one. Definitely not. Another routine prenatal test is the glucose screen that checks for evidence of gestational diabetes. It's performed between weeks 24 to 28. Pregnancy is one of those times in a woman's life 
where your metabolism of carbohydrates may change. And if such, you could be developing what we call gestational diabetes. It's where you don't metabolize your carbohydrates correctly. You have elevated glucose levels in your blood, which means that we need to put you on a low carbohydrate diet. Occasionally, women need to be put on insulin, but that's pretty rare. Genetic testing that's available currently is very accurate. A lot of them are DNA based. They are also very expensive tests. We don't like to necessarily offer all of them to everyone because some people may have a very, very low risk of a certain genetic disorder in comparison to somebody who might have a very high risk. But for somebody who is in a ethnic group that a particular genetic disorder is very common, that test may be crucial because they may have a higher risk of a very life-changing genetic disorder in their child. And so typically what we'll do is we'll try to target who we offer the test to, to who is going to benefit the most from these tests. Prenatal testing is done to ensure maximum maternal and fetal health. Although the results are not always conclusive, they provide women with valuable insight and information about their pregnancies and the peace of mind that comes with knowing that everything is normal.